Hey y'all, this is Austin's Animals, and I have officially lost my marbles. Okay, I've done something truly crazy though. That photo you just saw of me in the green table. Well, this is it seven hours later. I have built the ultimate Critter Town. Or the, the XL Critter Town, the Uber Critter Town. The point is, it's the biggest one I've made yet. And pretty much encompasses the entirety of my bedroom, save for a couple action figure shelves. Now, why would I do something like this, other than the fact that I'm losing my mind? Well, I was looking on how to rearrange figures in my room, and I kind of had things uh, split into these three segments, if you would. I had the Old World Village that I did a video on, I had the Main Street Village, and then I had the Ewoks. And those were kind of like three big displays that I had on these large, clunky, old Ikea furniture. And I was kind of just rolling my chair around them <laughs> in order to customize and film them for videos. So I was thinking, well, what if I combined all of them? What if I took all of my Calico Critters, Little Woodsies, all of my Ewoks, and just in general all of my action figures that are three to four inches tall and put them into one large display, essentially building my own animal world. It's like my own version of Animal Crossing or Zootopia. I mean, this thing is just a behemoth. Look at the scale of this. It took me about seven hours to build from start to finish. But the good thing is, is that it's it's much more easy to customize now because previously I had everything separated across the room in these little segments. Now it's just kind of one large piece. And I'm not going to say this is the final Critter Town. I know I've said that before, like ultimate, final, definitive. No, this is just the big Critter Town because I know for a fact that I am probably going to start anew and make another one a few months from now. But you know what? That's the whole fun of this hobby. The fun of toy collecting and diorama building is that you get to play with all these pieces, kind of like Legos, if you would, and build your own universe. In this case, I had so much fun blending the world of the Ewoks with my other figures, something that I've never got to do before. The Ewoks have always kind of been on their own island, separated from the rest of my figures. But now they're interacting with Robin Hood and Maid Marian, some of the Calico Critters, and just some, some of the toys that kind of fit that woodland aesthetic. And since they are, you know, kind of behind the trees here, it, it does give the impression that they're just behind the campground where all of the Critters are camping. So... I'm not even sure where to begin on filming something like this. So I guess I'm kind of just going to do a 360 around the whole thing. And if you want to see a section more detailed, you know, just pause or slow down the video. But I'll, I'll, I'll try and cover every base we have here. So this, this is the massive Critter Town. And how I've broken it up is I've done the top layer, which I'm calling the forest. And that's where you have the campground and all of the Ewoks, the entire Endor world. And then down here, we have what I am calling Main Street. And this is where you have the more building-like buildings. And yes, that is a castle at the end of Main Street. I didn't know where to put the castle from the Old World Village. It was the last piece I put in the town. And I had this big empty spot on Main Street. So I'm just like, well, why not go all the way and just make it Disneyland. Because people have called the Critter Town Disneyland in the past. In the past. And uh, now it's just kind of fulfilling that prophecy. And that's the way I see this whole Critter Town. Is this is kind of where it was heading. And the, the little tiny vignettes and displays were never going to be sustainable. They were very difficult to customize. But now I have it all as one giant piece. And it actually makes my figures easier to display. I got to display more figures on this than the previous shelving unit. So there's the top layer, the bottom layer, and then just to show you here, this flap opens up, 
And inside the top layer, we have all of the accessories to customize Critter Town with. So I can very easily, you know, walk around this display and add new pieces, take away pieces, and basically play with it. And that's the fun of this hobby. I, I've had a lot of fun building this. You know, some people have model railroads. I have a model animal town. It's what I like. Why not? So this, this is the campground section. We have an RV here. It looks like they're having a little cookout. And we've got the, the Holiday Inn sign. Oop, almost fell there. And I, I want to talk about this Holiday Inn sign. I had no idea where to put this because I, I was placing it in different areas of the town. And I realized that this sign, which is probably one of my favorite pieces in my entire collection, looks good anywhere. You could put this in front of any building and it looks fantastic. And I put it here because it just fit the campground theme, you know. Makes you think of a classic American road trip. Uh, maybe it's for a Holiday Inn RV park, because there's an RV there. And uh, you have things like the, the mountain here. This is actually the beach area I'm going to get to in a second. But because the beach area has a back rock wall, I thought, well, that would look really good, actually, with the campground. So now we've got, for the first time, because I'm building in a more 3D space, the last Critter Town wasn't really 3D, it was kind of up against a wall. So now I get to use the back sides of these buildings as well as the front sides to build an environment, which was really fun. It was a little challenging because I'm not used to building a town like this. I kind of had my format, if you remember, the infamous IKEA Billy bookshelf that I built my old ones on. Everything kind of faced one way, but not with this one. This is the ranger station because every forest has to have a good ra forest ranger department. We've got the ranger car, which is a really wonderful Playmobil item. I quite like that. And a Smokey the Bear statue. I don't know what you call that architecture where like you've got a statue of something instead of a sign to tell you what it is. But I'm telling you it was a thing. It was a big thing in like the 50s. So it was good old, good old Smokey there. And then this is the campground. We have picnics. We have a couple getting married. Looks like those two ladies are coming from the beach, which we'll get to in a second. So panning around here. This is the beach setup. I've done beach setups before, but this one was really cool because I got to take the skeleton here that I had previously used as the Ewok throne and kind of use it as a structure, like it was part of this forest. And I think it looks really good. We also have the uh, Calico Critter Beach Home, which is one of my favorite Critter Homes. This is a cool, cool piece. I just like how it's got water, mountains, even a little interior, everything you need to kind of make an instant seaside destination. And then we have the lovely lounging ladies here. The duct tape bikinis are just adorable, and I have so much fun making them. I've said that in the past, I originally came up with the duct tape bikini because when I started collecting critters, you couldn't find clothing. Clothing for the calico critters is actually more than the figures themselves, if you would believe that. So I would find loose naked, naked critters at the uh, flea market, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I started taking duct tape and making these this little swimwear for them. Now I have a bunch of calico critter clothing, but I've decided to keep the duct tape bikinis because I think they're adorable. That's the shower. Okay, moving over here, we have the massive Ewok Village Endor setup. This is the same setup as I've shown in the past Ewok videos, but now it's been reconfigured to fit the Calico Critters. So here we have the Ewok Marketplace, where they're selling fruits and vegetables. It looks like pottery and statuary and all sorts of fantastical things you would expect the Ewoks to be selling. Moving over to my second Ewok Village, which I've kind of combined to make a super Ewok Village, and you have a little party here. It looks like we have 
uh, Nisa here, princess of the Ewok tribe, resting atop her throne, uh, as well as Robin Hood and Maid Marian. They just seemed like a perfect fit for the Ewoks. Uh, they, they, they definitely belong here. Especially considering, and here's a toy fact for you toy, toy collectors out there, the Ewok village was re-released as the Shorewood Forest for the Robin Hood toy line. So, you know, Ewoks and Robin Hood kind of destined to be together there. Moving up, we have some of the larger trees where I've placed these Ewok huts as well as smaller Ewoks. Um, a, a lot of the trees I use are small Christmas trees you'd find at Christmas time. They're usually about 10 bucks at Target or Walmart, uh, but if you go to a flea market, you can get them for pennies on the dollar. Here are two of my favorite Ewoks, Pop, Lou, and Ramba. These guys are notoriously tough to find on the aftermarket, especially Ramba here. He's one of the most difficult Ewoks to get, but he, he's my favorite. Just look at him. Look at his little, his little grin and teeth. Oh, he's adorable. There we go. Oh, see the, the display is falling apart as I speak. Moving over here. Here is the critical interpretations of me and my girlfriend, Sarah, the love of my life as her mushroom bunny. Uh, these are ad adorable characters we've made uh, to take place in the Critter Town. And this is the Ewok Battle Wagon. Uh, this is actually not the Ewok version of the Battle Wagon. This is the re-release from the Robin Hood toy line. Again, when the Robin Hood toy line came out, they just re-released a lot of the Ewok toys. And typically, they're the cheaper versions. So if you want to collect Ewoks and build an Ewok town, look up the Robin Hood toys. They're exactly the same and less than half the price. This cute house here is the Play School Ewok Hut. It's a fun piece. I had it as a kid. Uh, playing with it when I was little is probably one of the reasons I love Ewoks so much. And it just has such a wonderful fantasy feel. Uh, I don't have any of the original furniture for this, though, as it can be quite expensive. So I've outfitted it with Calico Critter furniture, as well as some fun miniatures that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree actually has a lot of fantastic fantasy miniatures, uh, like these pawns and this welcome sign. Uh, you'll find them all over the display. I love this one that's like a pile of logs. I think I have a few of those around the Ewok Village. Because, you know, for $1.25, uh, it just looks good. So that's that's kind of the whole Ewok land, which, let's face it, is a much more interesting Star Wars land than what Disneyland built. Hey oh, And then here we have our forest lodge tucked away in the back of the village. Oh, and just moving over here real quick. Uh, not part of the town, but we have my Ewok tree. Where I've just kind of like, there's an Ewok with his glider, there's Wicket, there's my Ewok staff. Can you tell I like Ewoks? Okay, moving over here, there's the back side of the Ewok village. And yes, even on the back side, I have figures. And this is the lodge. It looks like the Porcupine family is staying there currently, and they're having a lovely time. The lodge is one of my favorite critter houses, and I gave it some of my best furniture I have including this wonderful fireplace and that great uh, mid-century lamp. I love that. So there we go. Oh, but it looks like the older brother is up to no good, as it looks like he's going to take a splash in the hot tub where he has invited some bikini bimbos to party with. I wonder how Mother feels about that. Moving over here, this is the coffee house. Uh, this is technically Sarah's coffee house. One of the fun things we did with the Critter Town is we gave ourselves businesses. Uh, I had a toy shop, which is now the Ranger Station. And I, I asked Sarah, you know, if you could have any business you'd want, any anything in the Critter Town, she picked a library coffee shop where you could check out a book and grab a baked item. And... I think I did a, a very cozy job with this. Doesn't this just look cozy? Like tucked away in the trees back here. You could get some some of that Maxwell house and then have it with baked goods and read uh, the mushroom. What is that? The magical mushroom. You wouldn't want to read that. 
just looks fantastic. Some of the figures in here are from all different toy lines, you'll notice. These are obviously Calico Critters that I've customized. This guy back here is from the Teddy Repskin toy line. And it looks like the koala is on a date with an Ewok. Hope it works out. This is the toilet. Uh, every campground's got to have a nice, clean toilet. Let's be honest. I mean, who, who wants to, you know, do business in nature? You know, we have nice, clean indoor toilets at this campground. Over here, here's the classic campfire. Wouldn't be a campground without a great campfire where well, they're making marshmallows and telling stories. And it looks like Smokey the Bear is telling the kids not to start forest fires. Over here, we have the Ranger Station. And I've put uh, Clawhauser from Zootopia in charge of the station, although it looks like he's having donuts and coffee on the job, like he always does. And it looks like even, even Judy Hops is slacking off on the job and having a nice donut. Guess they're just, you know, waiting for some trouble to happen. In the meantime, donut time. This is a fun building. I always have fun customizing this one. And uh, Ranger Station just fits perfectly. And then back here, that takes us to the front of the Ranger Station. And that's pretty much the whole forest area. A big campground with a bunch of Ewoks. So, yeah, that's that. And then moving down here, we have Main Street. There's a lot going on here. So I'm just kind of going to pan the camera around. And you can notice all of the critters and scenes that are happening in this town. It is definitely a bustling and popular Main Street. The tram is moving, people are going to walk, people are getting off walk and going on dates and going shopping and exploring everything this vibrant downtown has to offer. Starting from this building here, this is the department store, which I think needs more inventory. I know it's looking a little empty right now, uh, but I, I was having trouble filling those shelves. So next time you'll see this, it will be filled with items. I know in the past Critter Towns, I've had these mega department stores that are absolutely massive. So this time I decided to scale back, but I know the shelves are looking a little empty, which is kind of like, you know, what we're seeing right now with retail stores. Have you seen the toy aisle? Oh my goodness. But it looks like up top, we do have a very vibrant party. Some sort of wedding. Looks like the two foxes are getting married, having a wedding cake. She's ready to slice a, a piece of cake there. Oh, and we have uh, beverages. You know, may, kids, make sure that you don't drink. Leave the drink into the adults. So there's that building. And then over here, uh, we have the restaurant. Now, the restaurant is actually bigger than previous versions of the restaurant in my town. I guess when I made this Main Street, I was like, eh, forget the department store. I've done that before. What I need is a nice restaurant. It looks like the Dalmatian uh, had a bit too much to drink, so he's down for the count. But that's all right, because the, the wife is like, well, I'll just steal your burrito. This is the kitchen. I'm making some good dishes. And it looks like the two cats are on a date. Drinking some milk. Good choice, kitties. Two more cats on a date. Oh, they got they brought the kid. They've got the kid with them. And they're having some croissants and tea. How uh how classy this is. Okay. So that's that's Main Street. We've got the restaurant and the department store. Main Street definitely is the one that I know I'll be walking on next. It does need a bit more walk, but you know, when you spend seven hours <laughs> making this village, not not everything's going to be up to, up, to, up to snuff. But that's okay, because the Critter Town is always changing and always evolving. And the next time you see it, it will probably be totally different, because that's how I do things. Starting over and building another town is the fun of this hobby. Just taking these pieces and seeing how I can rearrange them and what I can do with them. Moving on to this portion, we have the treehouse. This was a vintage Fisher-Price toy. And yes, if it looks similar to the Ewok one I showed up top, it's because they're the same toy. Uh, it was released as the family treehouse in, I believe, 1975. 
and then re-released and repainted as the Ewok family hut in 1985. So looks like there's some cats in there. Again, this is another one that in a future town I would like to have next to the Ewoks. I think this is just destined to become an Ewok home. But uh, we'll see as things change and the, the town evolves. I'll update it with videos. Okay, so for the final portion of the town, we have the Honeybee Acres Farmhouse. This is an absolutely massive playset from the Honeybee Acres toy line. I haven't got to display it yet because it's so big. And that was one of the things I wanted to do with this town. I kind of had this playset under my bed, and I was just looking at it like, there's got to be some way to display it. So this is what I've done. I have made a lively farm townhouse. Outside, we have kids getting ice cream and playing on the playground. The mailman's delivering mail. Everything you need for, like, a perfect small-town America farmhouse. And then on the other side, we're going to get to see the massive interior that this house has, as well as the farm truck. Now, before we do that, I want to say that not only is this playset massive, which is crazy because it's for the critters, and the other houses are not this big. This has got to be the biggest critter house they've ever made. But this isn't even the whole playset. There's actually a fairly large outdoor deck that clicks onto the side that I had to remove in order to get it to fit in the town. If you'd believe that, it's actually bigger than this. But I'll be honest, that outdoor deck is pretty flimsy. And uh, I was not too impressed with it. I'm like, I could build a better one. And that's what I did with the playground there. Okay, so moving over here into this portion, we have another uh, RV trailer. I think I just put this here, honestly, as filler, because I didn't have anything to put here. And I didn't want to end up with two of these, but I kind of did because I bought someone's Calico Critter collection, and this kind of came with it. So until I, you know, eventually trade or sell this, uh, it'll be displayed here. And it does look like it has a pretty nice kitchen, though. It's like the nicest kitchen I've ever seen in an RV. Look at that. Okay, so this is the farmhouse. And this is home to all of the bunnies. It is a bunny farmhouse. Look at all the bunnies. I have a lot of bunnies. You know, they multiply. It's what they do. It's probably the animal I have the most of. So this this is housing all the bunnies. It looks like some of the, uh, the older men here are... Uh, lifting up some of the heavy fruits and vegetables and preparing uh, farm uh, vegetables to take to the city. Maybe they, maybe they sell it to the restaurant and the Ewoks, and that's that's how they make their money. Though it looks like this guy's on a break. He's having a nice little popsicle there. Uh, this is the kitchen. Boy, the bunny kitchen is always very lively, but it looks like tonight is pizza night, as they're making some amazing homemade pizza that honestly is better than what the restaurant serves. Let's be real. Nothing like great homemade food, right? Moving down into the living quarters, it looks like dad's watching some television with his son, and one of the older brothers is standing by the aquarium there. Looks like it's dinner time for some of the bunnies, as they have carrots, which is what they have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And of course, mother is vacuuming, always trying to keep the house clean when these little ones are making such a mess. They're playing Monopoly right now, which you'll know if your parent has a lot of small pieces. Hope they don't get any of the game pieces that caught in the vacuum. That'd be very unfortunate. Okay, moving up the steps onto the, the next level, we have the bathroom. And it looks like it's a very busy bathroom. This bunny fell over. He's, he's tired of waiting for the bathtub. Looks like this guy's taking all the bathtub time. And these three bunnies are like, hurry up, we have stuff to do. Of course, they're also working on laundry. It's laundry day every day when you have a family this big. And Grandma left her teeth again in the bathroom. Oh, Grandma. Oh, look, there's Grandma up there. And it looks like she's watching over the little ones as they play in their bedroom. This, uh, this was not supposed to be the little one's bedroom. But if you look at the roof, it's slanted. And a lot of the regular size furniture doesn't fit in here. I'm not sure what the average kid is supposed to do with this room because none of the furniture for the Honey Biegos line or any of the figures fit in this room. However, it is perfectly sized for all of the baby furniture 
for the uh, Quiros. So that, that fits. And then moving on to the final loom. This one has a slanted roof, but it's actually a little higher. So you get a little more room to display pieces of furniture. And it looks like this is the uh, one of the daughter's rooms. She's listening to music. Uh, she's got a uh, meal on her wardrobe. She probably loves fashion. Though right now she is sleeping. And let's not watch. That's a little weird. So there they all are. That's the, the happy bunny family living in peace and harmony. It's a little a chaotic household for sure. But you know what? They're happy. They're all happy together. And oh, I forgot out here. Last section. This is the actual carrots themselves being farmed. Because what else would a bunny farm? As well as a, a dog farmer. He's probably like, I gotta find out the bunny's secret. How they make so many good crops and outsell me. I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe that's what he's saying. And then finally, we've got another one of the Dottles who's uh, enjoying some sunshine and laying there in a bikini having a popsicle. A perfect summer day, right? Maybe this is her boyfriend. Could be. He's like, he's hanging out with her. I don't know. So there you go. That's the bunny farmhouse. Kind of the 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 piece of the resistance of the, the critter town. <laughs> I've always wanted to display this one, so... It was kind of my first time decorating this thing, and it was a lot of fun. Though I do, I do actually want to say, if if you're gonna buy this farmhouse, you probably should buy it used because putting it together is a nightmare. The thing comes in like a thousand pieces, and it's like building a Lego set. It's terrible. But speaking of Lego sets, is the entire Critter Town in its entirety not one big Lego set that can be built and reconfigured? And that's what I've done. The real goal here wasn't necessarily to create the ultimate critter environment, but to put it all in one place. Because now all of Crittertopia is together, and it can be customized. So I imagine we'll be back here another time to check out more configurations and updates to the Critter Town. But from now, and until who knows when, you know, when the sun explodes... All of Quiddleland will live together in peace and harmony, where, you know, little woodsies and calico critters and uh, what are the lines there off the top of my head? So, uh, little woodsies, calico critters, uh, Sylvanian families, uh, what am I missing? Ewoks, obviously, uh, the Robin Hood figures, the Zootopia figures, uh, the Smokey the Bear figures, like Maple Town. Can't forget Maple Town. It, it all lives together in one big critter town. So anyways, that's it for today's update. Thank you for watching and checking out the town. If you have any questions about the town, just let me know in the comments and I'll answer them. And what do you think the town needs? What would you love to see added to the critter town? Is it like killing you on the inside that there's no pizzeria in this town and that instead they, they, have, to, they have to make pizza at home uh, like a bunch of Neanderthals. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.